Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. I'm Pastor George Pearsons, and this is my amazing wife, Pastor Terry Copeland Pearsons. Well, thank you, amazing husband. Thank you, amazing wife. It's so good to be on the broadcast with you it again. It's good. I like coming here. This really is exciting. It's I'm, always I'm tell good you to what, be a part of this. It really is. And Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, thank you. Thank you for allowing us to be on Mom this podcast. Yes, absolutely. Those of you who may not know who we are, um, Pastor Terry and I pastor Eagle Mountain International Church, and I'm the CEO of Kenneth Copeland Ministries. She is the CVO, Chief Visionary Officer. Thank you very much. Of Kenneth Copeland Ministries. I have to tell a funny story right here. <laughs> yeah, tell. So we were over at my daughter's house and all the grandkids, and we were watching the launch of your program, Inside, Inside the, the Vision, vision. Yep. the very first one. Yeah. And you introduced me on that program as the Chief Visionary Officer. And our six-year-old <clears throat> granddaughter, Piper, went, turned around and looked at me and saluted. <laughs> she sure <laughs> she did. She saluted. Oh, yeah. yes, and, and I have been saluted several times That's since. Right. So That's I, right. <laughs> anyway, I thought that was funny. It's well, a grandkid story you gotta throw in there. It's great to be on the broadcast, to be able to preach the uncompromised word of faith, to build up your spirit, to build up your day, and for you to know who you are in Christ Jesus and what we do to be able to follow the plan of God, the will of God, and be able to walk out this life of faith together. I want to let you know that our outlines are available to you. Everything that we're teaching on the broadcast, uh, the notes will be available on kcm.org slash notes. Just go there. You can download those notes. Uh, you can pause right now, go get the notes, and follow along with us on this. Now, Terry, we just do that to be helpful, and there'll be a lot of content in those notes that we won't have time to say right, uh, right here. But boy, they're laid out so, so well. Good job, George. And he, he has put these together so well that you can d do a home Bible study, <laughs> right. or you can use them in right. your church congregation, or, or however you want to talk about share, sharing on social media, you can share these notes. On these broadcasts for this two weeks, we're going to focus on something that is so important to the life of faith, and that is the lifestyle of forgiveness. Oh, forgiveness. no, are we gonna have to talk about yes, that? Yes, we are gonna have to talk about that. Okay. But it's a good thing, because <clears throat> when you learn how to forgive, you can walk in a place of faith that you've never walked before. And to begin this, I want to start with a clip from Brother Copeland teaching. He was actually teaching at the Kenneth Copeland Bible College that we have here. He was teaching a class, and in that class, he said something that absolutely sums up where we're going on these broadcasts. So take a look at Brother Copeland. So let's go back to our fundamental scripture in Mark eleven twenty two, Jesus answering saith unto them, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be not thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. And when you stand praying, forgive if you have aught against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. You remember uh, the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. There it is. Huh? Huh? Amen. I mean, there it is right there. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. You don't forgive. If, if, if we refuse to forgive, now this, this, is, this is fundamental to faith. In fact, this is very interesting. I never noticed this. And uh, in all the years that I've been listening to Brother Hagin and studying his, his works, I have... Uh, a whole library of them. And you know, there's things that are gonna come out uh, on in teaching on the same subject that you said on one and you didn't say on the other one. 
and he made this statement. He said, just go through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you'll find him. He said, there's, there's many hindrances to faith, but this is the only one Jesus said anything about. Now, that's very important, wouldn't you say? This is the only one he said anything about. When you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any. So, faith, this is the fourth fundamental of faith. Faith will not work in an unforgiving heart. What a statement that is, Terry. Faith will not work in an unforgiving heart. And the scripture he was quoting there, Mark 11, 22 through 26, it, it says in 26, when you stand praying, forgive if you have aught against any, so that your Father which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. We're looking here at a major key to the operation of faith and how faith works. You know, um Mark Hankins said something like in that scripture we hear it sometimes, well, they ought not done that to me. And Jesus said, well, you ought to forgive them. You ought to forgive them. <laughs> you ought to forgive them. <laughs> you ought to forgive yeah. them. Yeah. So this is a real important, like you said, key to our, yes. our faith. Uh, and faith is critical yeah. to our Christian walk. Yep. In every regard, it's, it's critical to everything that's in the Bible. Uh, you know, notice too, he says, uh, when you stand praying, that means you have to do it right then. Don't put it off. Don't separate it from, from what's working in the middle of your praying. Jesus didn't separate it. He said, look, this is something that's working right in the middle of this prayer exchange between you and the Lord, between you and the Father, while you may be asking him for something. This is something to take care of it. And you can also expect in the environment of that prayer and that request that that kind of revelation will come to you. Something will come to you because the Lord wants your prayers to be answered and he wants you to eliminate all, yeah. all hindrances. That's right. That's right. Terry, that reminds me. Um, my first car was a car that my grandfather gave me. It was a 1963 Ford Falcon station wagon. What, Ooh, what a car. What a glory. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> but I was, you that know. That was kind of like, like my 1960 Rambler station exactly. wagon. Exactly. And I'm, I'm 19 years old. I'm driving this car. And, and all of a sudden, I'm, I'm driving down the highway, and it's beginning to sputter. It's like somehow something's going wrong with the car. There's something's inhibiting it from, from driving. And so I'd have to pull off the road, stop the car, wait, and then I would go a little bit further. And it took, it took a little while to figure out what was going on. But there was a guy at a gas station. He said, let me check something out. Well, he checked the, the tank. And what he found was a little, a little piece of cardboard that was in the gas tank and it kept rising and it would block where the gas was going through. That was it, that was it. Unforgiveness will block your faith and I want my faith working at maximum potential. That puts we all you, do. That puts your life at risk in that car because yeah. you're going and if you give it the gas when you really need it and it shut down on you, yes. that puts you at risk it for does. an accident. It did. Bad, bad situation, and so having unforgiveness in our hearts shuts off our faith, yeah. and faith is essential to the Christian life. Can yeah. I read through my yeah, list right here? Do. This Go is through. one of my favorite yeah. lists and things to this read. Is good. This is so faith is essential, and here are the reasons why. Okay, we can't get saved without it. Ephesians two eight. We can't walk the Christian walk without faith. Second Corinthians five seven. Galatians three eleven. We can't be blessed without it. Galatians three nine. We're guarded by God's power through faith. First Peter one five. Faith makes us whole, and it brings healing. Matthew nine twenty two and twenty nine. Mark ten fifty two. All grace is by faith. Ephesians two eight. Well, without grace, that's God's ability on yes. us to do what yes. he wants us to do, have what he wants us to have. By faith, we have what we hope for, 11's, uh, Hebrews 11.1. 1. We can't fight the good fight of faith without faith, and that's 1 Timothy 6.12. We can't quench fiery darts without faith. Our armor depends on faith, lifting up above all 
the shield of faith, Ephesians 6, 11 through 13 and 16. We can't overcome the world without faith, 1 John 5, 4, which is really our scripture mm -hmm. yeah. for our whole victory channel. Exactly. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Right, right. Without the preaching and hearing of faith, there's no ministry of the Holy Spirit and no miracles are worked, Galatians 3, 5. Our faith is more precious than gold, 1 Peter 1, 7. We can't stand without faith, mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians 1, 24. All else apart from faith, from faith is sin. Wow. Romans 14, 23. We are commanded to have faith and not just any kind of faith. We're supposed to have God's kind of faith, yeah. Mark 11, 22. And I like this, especially when the Son of Man returns, what's he gonna look for? Faith. But faith yeah. is totally hindered, hampered, you could say hamstrung, yeah. without the working and the support, the, the underpinning yes. of the love of God. Of the love of God. And the love of God includes walking in forgiveness towards others. It really is a discipline. And he's talked about, Brother Copeland talked about in Mark 11, he was talking about when you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any, that your Father which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. He quoted actually Matthew 6, 12, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass us. Now, I wanna read this to, to you. This is from the Amplified Translation. And this I call the man with the unforgiving heart. Now we need to have a forgiving heart. That's so important. Even if you, if that's the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning, I forgive, I forgive, I let it go because that's how the devil gets us to stop our faith and shut us down in our lives by holding on to that. You know that you said that about <laughs> making the statement, I forgive. Um, yeah. So don't think about for acting the act of forgiveness, the statement of forgiveness only after something has happened, but rather I forgive as a statement of, this is who I am, yeah. this is what I do, yes. this is how yes. I live, this is what, and so in preparation for the day, because there very well could be something you could find to be bothered by, to be judgmental over, to be criticizing people, I walk in love, <laughs> I forgive. Yes, yes, so I wanna read this, this is, this is a word for us. It's a word for you. It's a word for me. Matthew 18, starting in verse 20 and 21, amplified. Peter came up to Jesus and said, Lord, how many times may my brother sin against me and I forgive him and let it go? As many as up to seven times? And Jesus answered him, I tell you, not up to seven times, but 70 times seven. That's a lifestyle, George. That That's is a four, lifestyle. 490 oh. times. Yeah. 490 yep. times, that in one day. In one, in one, <laughs> one day. day. <laughs> and, yep. uh, and, and no matter who you're married to, it's really hard to push the envelope on that number. Yep. But it just means all day. All day. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a human king who wished to settle accounts with atten his attendants. When he began the accounting, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents, probably $10 million. Mm, wow. And because he could not pay it, his master ordered him to be sold with his wife and children and everything that he possessed in payment to be made. So the attendant fell on his knees, begging him, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And his master's heart was moved with compassion and he released him and he forgave him, canceling the debt. But, uh-oh, the same attendant as he went out found one of his fellow attendants who owed him a hundred denarii, about $20. He caught him by the throat. He said, pay me, pay what you owe, pay what you owe. So his fellow attendant fell down and begged him earnestly, give me time, I'll pay you all. But he was unwilling and he went out and he had him put in prison till he should pay the debt. And when his fellow attendants saw what happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and told everything that had taken place to their master. Then his master called him and said to him, you contemptible and wicked attendant, I forgave and canceled all that great debt of yours because you begged me to. And should you not have had pity and mercy on your fellow attendant, as I had pity 
and mercy on you. And in wrath, his master turned him over to the torturers, the jailers, till he should pay all that he owed. So also, my heavenly Father will deal with every one of you if you will not freely forgive your brother from your heart his offenses. And I wrote down here, unforgiveness shuts God's out, God out. He is love. If we choose unforgiveness over him, he can't get anything to us. So that is a real demonstration, Terry, of what we're talking about here. We do not want to be the unforgiving servant. No. No, and and you can see here that the unfor the forgiveness that the that the one that was owed so much money his forgiveness towards that first servant yeah. uh, he he retracted that it came back because to haunt him because that man was unforgiving he brought yeah. he that man brought wrath on himself he caused it to himself because he refused to walk in love. Yeah. You know, God is not a, a vengeful, wrathful God that if you uh, make a mistake like that or you fall short in it, that he's just gonna wipe you out. He's talking here about spiritual law. So God is there to help us. God is far more merciful than you could even identify right. in any person, right. but he's there to help us. But it's to help, help us as we move towards what he wants us to do, okay? And, and not to excuse or wink, look away from, or just uh, blink at our at sin. And right. he makes it right. very clear that unforgiveness is wicked. Yeah, he's letting us know that, that part of the wickedness of that is it's hurting us. It's hurting you. When you carry that, when you carry the unforgiveness over something, something that's done to you, something that somebody has said to you, you carry that for years and years. And we'll be talking later on in the broadcast about how it affects you physically, how it affects you spiritually, how it affects your soul. And it's so important to let it go. Get rid of it. Lay aside every weight and every sin that so easily besets you so that what? You can run the race that's set before you. So unforgiveness is a weight that holds us down. It is, and you don't even <coughs> notice it. Don't, sometimes little things build up. We'll talk more about this as we go on. But you know, when a swimmer, a competitive swimmer, he takes care of even the slightest little thing yeah. that besets him. Yeah. You know, uh, George, we've really learned from listening to Brother Hagen and from watching my dad, Brother Copeland, right. and, and other right. people. I think about Sister Billy Brim. Mm -hmm. I think about my grandmother and other people that we've seen. And to be both close to them, but also far enough, far enough removed to watch what has happened in their lives and the things that have been said to them, about yeah. them, uh, people that were close to them that were really, really hateful or turned on them, or people they didn't know that were unkind. You know, and you, whether it's picketers outside sure. demonstrating sure. in the street or yep. just all kinds of things, yeah. and that no matter what it was to watch them take a stand, not only of faith, but a stand of love yeah. and to be forgiving. Yeah. And you know, dad's always taught us, and he said he learned this from Brother Hagen, that if your prayers aren't working, if your faith isn't working, then you need to f investigate and go look and see where your love is not working, where your unfor where unforgiveness might be there because of that being that hindrance. It's the cardboard in the tank, right? Yeah, cardboard the, in the tank. Yeah, and you know, you if you live a life of unforgiveness, it's no longer just a thing that's in the tank. What it becomes then is water in the tank, and it's mingled in, yep. and you have to do a much bigger procedure to get rid of all that, get it all cleaned out, washed right. out, yep. and you have to start over. But if we'll maintain that love walk and stay on top of it, it's very easy to just um, remove and extract right. Right. that unforgiveness. So if we'll go and straighten out those issues when it seems that faith is not working and we just straighten out those issues, then then our, we can go then go back to our confession of faith, yep. go back to uh, being uh, and walking in that love walk and we'll see we'll see faith take hold. And, and, and something that I've learned too about this, it's not always <clears throat> something that that 
that somebody has done to you, but you know, whenever I go before mm. the Lord where forgiveness is concerned, I ask the Holy Spirit to show me, have I done something wrong? That's Did important. I do something? That, that caused them offense in their life? Did I offend them in some way? And it's amazing how many times I have gone before the Lord and he said to me, now George, there was something that you did in this that you are responsible for and, and you need to ask forgiveness, whether it's, it's ask forgiveness of him or ask forgiveness of the individual. Um, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit will work with us on that. We have to learn uh, to, to recognize, you know, we look at, <clears throat> We, we want to see what God says about love and we yeah. judge ourselves with our good intentions, yeah. but we need to let the word judge us by our actions, whether they're, they're right or not, yes. and our intentions, but also we have to remember how do other people hear us? You know, We expect sure. other people to sure. read our minds, but we need to think about how, did that, how does yeah. that person hear things? And you know something else you said, George, it's not always what people do to us personally, yeah. but there's this place of forgiveness in a broader sense, whether it's the politicians or the <clears throat> government <Yep>. or the <clears throat> right, corporate right. Or, or so forth. Right. We've, had to, we've had to forgive the insurance company a few times. Yes, we, I, I need to do that right now. Yes, praise <laughs> the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus, we, amen. When, when, you start, when you start studying this, things begin to come to light, and, and you'll see... Why hasn't my faith been working like it should? Oh, there's a key right there. When you stand praying, when you stand believing in faith, forgive, let it go, and release it. You know, Terry, on these broadcasts, I've got a very special offer, and, and the Lord directed me. This was a clear word from the Lord, because we were looking around for what we were to share with the people. But this book, this book by Rick Renner called You Can Get Over It, How to Confront, forgive and move on. We have obtained this book and making it an offer, you'll see, the, you'll see the product spot in just a moment. But let me just read you one, one portion of this book. <clears throat> Rick says this, if a person knowingly harbors bad attitudes, strife or unforgiveness in his heart, those attitudes can set up a roadblock in his life that prevents him from experiencing the power and the presence of God right now. And then he said, that's why it's so important for you to commit yourself to living free from offense and to make this commitment before you're faced with the opportunity to become offended. Dad says it's a decision of quality. And what's a yes. quality decision? Yes. That's one uh, um, from which there is no turning. There's, there's no retreat. Yes. And it's a, a quality decision is about one that, where there's no more debate, when they, which includes with yourself, no more justification, no more yeah, but. This is the way it's going to That's be. That's right. So stay with us. We're going to go to this product spot of, of Brother Rick's yeah, book. Yeah, to tell you how about the book, <laughs> yep. show you how you can get the yeah. book, and then when we finish with that, we'll come back and we'll pray for when everybody. When we come back, we're going to pray together, and you're going to start a lifestyle of forgiveness. You're going to begin it right now. It's starting right now. We're not waiting until tomorrow. It begins today. The sooner you forgive, the lighter you will feel and the more you'll be able to hear the voice of the Spirit of God. A lifestyle of forgiveness is how you and I walk together by faith. God's Word tells us over and over to forgive, but why does it seem so hard to do? You are not alone in your struggle to forgive. With the book, You Can Get Over It by Rick Renner, you'll learn how to walk free of the negative attitudes that have kept you bound and bitter. The devil would like nothing more than to keep you down in unforgiveness and misery. Don't let him. In this book, Rick Renner describes how life change comes from a heart change. Jesus understands your emotions, frustrations, and temptations, and still calls us to forgive because it's freedom for you. Walk through the 10 powerful steps to keep your heart free from bitterness and strife. Forgive and see a breakthrough in your health, finances, and relationships. Don't let the devil have a stronghold in your life. No offense is worth sabotaging your future. Pray the prayer of forgiveness in the back of the book and thrive in a bitterness-free future. Start your journey to a life of forgiveness with Rick Renner's book, You Can Get Over It. 
Get your copy for only $9.99 on kcm.org slash TV special or when you call 800-600-7395. Be empowered by God's Word and find out how to make the quality choice to forgive and receive the good things God has for you. This offer is good for 60 days. Outside the United States, shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. In 2024, there's a KCM event for you. Come be a part of one of our free meetings and build your faith. December 31, join us for the New Year's Eve service at Eagle Mountain International Church in Newark, Texas. April 4 through 6, make plans to be at the Branson Victory Campaign in Branson, Missouri. July 29 through August 3, come to the Southwest Believers Convention in Fort Worth, Texas. For more information, go to kcm.org slash events. We're talking about the lifestyle of forgiveness all week long, and I wanna to present to you the Forgiveness Challenge. Yes, it begins today. It starts right now, to walk in forgiveness towards others. Terry, would you lead us in prayer over this and, and help, help all of us to be able to walk in that place where we can release those things that have caused offense and bitterness in our Absolutely. lives? Absolutely. I'll pray, you listen, and then you can use this as a, a model of prayer that you can go to. Oh, Father, I want to thank you so much thank you, Lord. for the forgiveness and love you have extended to me, not only in the new birth, but ongoing, Lord, that you are constantly watching over every way that you can extend love thank to you, me. Jesus. Help me, Lord, <clears throat> show me, any way that I have stumbled, where I have missed it, where I have held on to unforgiveness Thank or strife, God. bitterness, anger, or resentment. Show me, Lord, in ways that I could have and should have extended love where I held back. Help me, Lord, to know the love of Jesus, you, Jesus. in such a way that I not only receive, but I give. That I show the mm. love of God to me, through me. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Praise God. I forgive. I forgive. Amen. I forgive. And that's what we should be saying. I forgive. I forgive. That's a start. That's a beginning. I'm just sensing right now there are folks that, that you're beginning to do this and you are going to walk in a greater place of freedom in your lives. Well, until tomorrow, remember this. God loves you. We love you. And Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Watch the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast free on kcm.org or KCM's Roku channel. If you would like a free copy of the broadcast to put into your faith library, you can download it on kcm.org or request it on DVD or CD. Keep your heart full of the Word of God and continue to grow in faith. Every believer has a voice and it is the voice of victory.